Welcome to the Naminara Republic. And where do we do we have to buy a visa or something? We've got a dodgy car following us with tinted windows. Did you know that there's a micro nation within South Korea? No? Well, neither did we until our Korean friend Won told us about it. But what is a micro nation? Well, according to Google, it's a small area or political entity that claims national sovereignty but is not recognized by other sovereign states. So I think we better go check it out. Travel makes you realize that no matter how much you know, there's always more to learn. Morning, Mossy. Morning. Very bright. We had a good night's sleep here in the, in this car park. Just next to the beach where we've been parked is this uh, fishing harbour. You can see all the fishing boats. There's one over there that's just uh, just come in, unloading a uh, collection of crabs they've caught overnight. We're just going to show you the plan for today. This is where we've driven already. Uh, we're up the coast here, almost at the top of Korea. So the plan is today we're going to head up the coast. And then we're going to head inland to this point where there's uh, apparently an amazing temple. And then a couple of hours west is this place. This island is quite unique because apparently it's a micro nation. Never heard of that before. So apparently it's a nation within a nation. The only problem is they're covered in sand. Don't do it. <laughs> My aunt's gonna tell me off if I put that in there, okay. I know we live in a van, but we have to have some standards. Oh, I'm, I'm being a responsible husband. Yes, you are. <laughs> Just keep it, that one's okay. Yeah, you're good, you're good. Good job. <laughs> the guy came over and said, you're not gonna get out of there, but you did. What's the dead oh, woman dress. <laughs> Everyone's so lovely. Okay, the first drive today is about uh, just under an hour. It's definitely going to be a scorching day today. Yeah, I was just thinking I'm starting to melt. <laughs> That was a bit close. Okay. Toll road. We just started to get glimpses of really high mountain peaks poking through the clouds in front of us. Wow. Never thought one day I'd be driving past a sign that says Seoul. <laughs> wow. I did not expect to see mountains like that this morning. Hold on to what is real. The love you feel is like water in a glass. 
In a minute, exit the expressway on the left. <laughs> I'm sorry, how many there? Absolutely breathtaking views this morning and made so much better because of the clouds hugging the tops of the mountains. We just had to pull over because we spotted something yeah. that we were very curious about. Let me show you. So I've never actually seen Look. rice like that. You can see the rice on the top is forming like wheat. It grows like wheat. Yeah. Um, and it's still lots of water in this paddy field here. But this whole field looks like it's coming up to get ready to harvest. As I always say, you only know what you know. <laughs> and. Uh, it's just so nice. It's the beauty of travel. What I love about it is that you just learn these things and see these things that just improves your knowledge of life. I just didn't know. Talking of something, does anybody know what this plant is? Because it's driving me nuts not knowing. Yeah, my mum used to have them in her garden. Um, huh? And I don't know what they are, but I'd love to get one. I don't even know if they'd survive in the UK. Do you think she was, are? her mum was a super keen yeah. gardener yeah. and was always bent over weeding. And uh, that's one one flower in it that yeah. we remember. And we were like, I love that flower. We never, never knew yeah. what it was called. amazes me how you drive through a tunnel and then three or four minutes after driving through it you come out the other side and the weather looks like it's completely changed there's no clouds on the hills and it's like a blue sky <laughs> yeah. how does that happen yeah i don't know and the temperatures drop which makes no sense Okay, the road up ahead says no cars. So the parking at the bottom must be where we're going for the temple. So we'll just stop and try and ask which direction we walk. <laughs> this is the fun of it. In a minute, you are near your destination. <laughs> wow. 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 That is a mad spot. Look at this. They got a wonderful waterfall there. There's actually a lifeguard and there's someone's pitched a tent. Okay, so it seems like we need to park in the car park a little bit further down and apparently there's a shuttle bus that takes you to the temple. I said, can you walk? And the lady looked horrified. So I think, yeah, I think the temple is still like maybe four or five miles up the mountain. <laughs> so we've just come into the park car park. It opens by number plate recognition. So you just know that when we come to leave, we're never going to get out of this car park. We might be sleeping here until... Uh, until Monday when the staff come back to uh, to man yeah. the gate. Because the van gets so hot, we're gonna open the windows. Marianne's just looked at the weather forecast and hopefully um, it's not saying any rain. So fingers crossed we don't get some strange storm like we did last time we parked and left the van and came back and it was flooded. And we put this uh, silver lining in the windscreen just to reflect the heat and make it does make a massive difference it does and i think it's going to protect our reversing uh rear view camera which is an essential piece of kit for us okay 
They've got a lot of buses waiting to take people up and down. So my theory is, if it's that busy, it must be good. Sit at the front. Driving through the barrier, it didn't take long to realise why they don't allow cars to drive up here. <coughs> the driver skillfully manoeuvred down the narrow winding road, whilst most of the passengers held their breath. Hold on, is this a two-way road? We just stopped on a pull by, and I said to Chris, maybe there's one bus coming the other way. And there it is. Come down there. Well, that was an impressive drive. I think. Good job. Good job. <laughs> That was, He's a professional driver, I can was, say he is a professional oh, driver. Oh, amazing. So just walking over this bridge, oh, it's absolutely mind-blowingly beautiful. You can see the temple entrance in the distance behind me. And looking down at the riverbed, you can see all these piles of rocks that our people have piled up. The practice of stone stacking started many years ago, back when they worshipped mountain gods. By stacking stones, it was believed to allow them to make a wish directly to the gods. You can already feel there is something very, very magical about this. The temple was built back in the 7th century. Due to natural disasters and war, it has been rebuilt many times over the years. The temple you see today was completed in 1957. It actually says that they do meditating and calmness stays, so you get to stay and experience the life here in the mountains and get back in touch with nature, your mind and calm, and it would be wonderful to do. He needs it. <laughs> but today we haven't got time. <laughs> I would love to hear the bell sound, this enormous bell and uh, drum that you can see here. This has got to be one of the most peaceful places I've ever been. With golden autumn leaves starting to show on the trees, we took a quiet moment to absorb the calmness and atmosphere of this wonderful temple. Sometimes in life, it's hard to find these moments of quietness. It's amazing actually how calm you feel when you come to a place like this and that coach load of people that have arrived. You can't really hear them. They've all dissipated into the, this huge area. It's just really, really calming. And you can hear in the background the noise of the water surrounded by mountains and trees. In 1905, the poet Hang Yong Un was ordained at the temple, and following his enlightenment, he wrote many famous works. Dotted around the temple are monuments of his work, and a hall with paintings, old photographs, and written documents related to him. I'm literally blown away by the detail of the paintwork all around this whole temple complex. This looks like the main temple.
So we've taken advantage and we've got ourselves a drink. I have no idea what we have ordered. Jujube tea. Which is hot. And I have traditional Korean sweet drink that is iced. No idea what that is. <laughs> Down the hatch. Oh dear. I'm not sure. I have no idea what it is. It's very different, slightly sweet with a tamarind taste. Yeah, traveling to, to these places, there's, there's taste that you've never experienced before. And because of that, you taste it and you're not really sure how to react, whether you like it or not. Your one tastes like Christmas pudding. It's like almost Christmas pudding. It tastes like Christmas pudding. It's, yeah, it's nice. That tastes like sweet soya bean milk. One thing walking through these, uh, these kind of places, that calming effect, it helps you get in touch with your inner calmness. Sounds a bit mad, but uh, we've all lost people we know. Marianne lost her sister a few years ago and uh, kind of brought that emotion back and she, she had a little bit of a moment. So she's uh, just taking a moment out, which is why she's not with us right at this very second. Um, but she's good, she's good. Right, bye bye. It's just that time of the year where you just come to a place like this and all the emotions. It's all right. <laughs> Wasn't that just the most amazing temple? Um, but anyway, we jumped into Trudy. It's about two, two and a half hours to our next destination and it's already half past three. So we think we're probably going to find somewhere to park up um, in that direction and then head there first, first thing in the morning. Now hopefully, either the, the gate coming out of the car park is manned or it recognises Trudy's number plate, which I know from previous countries and previous experiences, it sees a foreign plate and it doesn't work. Yay, I can see my hand. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Pay for parking? Uh, what time did we morning. get here? Morning. We arrive this morning. Yes. 3,000. <laughs> Good job, there was somebody there. Um, so yeah, turn left my sweetness. That was, uh, yeah, that was much easier than I expected. Yeah. <laughs> that, that car's got a camera on the roof. That must be like a tax, a tax thing to, or a police truck. Yeah. That's very cool, isn't it? had this black BMW in front of us pull over to the side to let us go past and now it's following us. <laughs> we got a stalker. I think we may have. <laughs> the branded van. Or they're wondering why there's a, a British vehicle here. We've slowed down to 40 to see if they'll overtake. They're still there. Everybody else overtook. We've got a dodgy car following us with tinted windows. Oh, everybody has tinted windows here, but it's definitely a dodgy follow. Right, we've got nearly a full tank of gas so we can drive for about 400 miles. <laughs> Just keep driving around the we lose them. They'll run out and have to fill up and then we'll lose them. That is the problem with Trudy, it's not that like you can miss her. Okay, 
it. Now we've speeded up to see if they if they keep up or whether they they are keeping up. <laughs> went through a, uh, a traffic light that changed red and I thought oh that's it he's stopped and he's sped up so there's definitely somebody tailing us I don't know we'll do it we'll do a couple we'll stop at a rest stop and see if they come in okay we're pulling into the rest area and he's following us so there you go we can go in here and get a drink maybe it's the guy we met at the temple into a new road. Is he behind us? He's followed. He's on my right. The same guy? Yeah. I don't know. That's so lovely. Okay, it ended up being a, uh, a couple that we, we met at the temple and they uh, they just took us for coffee. So thank you very much, guys. Very much appreciated. Really lovely. And uh, another example of amazing Korean hospitality. We were just saying a lot of these cars, like the one in front, and Ecus, we have no idea what that is, but it looks like the back of a Mercedes, doesn't it? Yeah, we, I, I love cars. I'm always spotting different brands and, and uh, makes of cars, but so many of them, I don't recognize it. It's interesting. As you drive along, you see these uh, police flashing lights. And that's normally because there's a speed camera, like that one. It's nice of them to warn you. It is. If you were naughty enough to speed, <laughs> then that would be a good heads up. Yeah, that's nice. Okay. Our first big uh, Korean rest stop. And I think this will do for the night. <laughs> Service area, toilets, little restaurant. Shops. This is a very posh rest area. It's got a little fountain and seating area. <laughs> Look at that. Bins. Chickens? Oh my goodness, they've got chickens. Oh no, they're pheasants. They're little pheasants. Oh, they're beautiful. Look at those. They are beautiful. Hello. There's a there's a, like a garden park next to the rest stop. And I think I think it looks like there's gonna be a really nice view into the distance. Oh my goodness, look at that. I can see what's coming. Wow. Good morning. We had a good night's sleep in this roadside station. <laughs> Amazingly, it was super quiet all night, but it's not anymore. The fog has lifted. But this morning, we're gonna be heading about an hour further west to an island called Naminara Island, which is, as we previously said, a micro-nation, a self-declared micro-nation here in South Korea and I have no idea what to expect so we thought we'd go and check it out as we uh, as we head west. Yes I need to clean the windscreen good job Marianne. That is 
Everybody is so friendly. We've literally yeah. just spent the last 20 minutes with one couple after another couple yeah. coming to say hello and they see Trudy. Because Korea is super, super friendly. And we have sort of like filming days where we have scheduled ideas of what we want to go and see and interesting things that we want to film and share and other days where we stop and edit. And today we've been trying to leave, but the point, <laughs> the point about Korea is Everyone's been so friendly. So but friendly. So friendly. Just, just beautiful. Right, let's go and find this strange micro nation. Oh! There's a police car talking. Shall I stop moving? Shall I just wait here? I don't know. Maybe they've spotted Trudy. Maybe they've spotted Trudy. <laughs> I don't think so. No, they're going off. Are they going off? Yeah, they're going off. What will be interesting today is we still have the toll ticket from yesterday because we stayed at the service station. And I'm hoping they don't charge by time. I'm hoping it's by distance, which is what I think it is because online it says that a lot of people stay um, in, in these roadside stations. Although there wasn't many people there last night. So we'll have to see. Right, fingers crossed. Hamza Hamida. Hamza Hamida. Doesn't match the. Uh... Thank you. Hamza Hamida. So yeah, no extra price. So it's distance, not time. Whew, that's a relief. I, I was getting a bit nervous when she paused there for a moment. Hi. <laughs> Another nice welcome. <laughs> Everyone's just so friendly. Everyone's beautiful. <laughs> We're just wondering, what is on this micro nation? On this island in the middle of a river. I wonder if people actually live there or why it's a micro nation. But we're going to find out. Oh, we got army tanks and trucks going past. Loads of them. Look at that. It's a whole convoy of tanks. Come in. Parking, parking. Oh, come here. Okay. Come to Hamida. Yeah, that's the parking. Okay, we think we're in the right place. It all seems very chaotically crazy. I'm not sure in what's happening kind of in an organized kind of way. Is it region number plate? Okay. Oh, and then go down there. to the man. Slow down there. Yeah. Oh. Follow him. So here you go. Welcome to the Naminara Republic. And it says that there's a boat that goes every 30 minutes or every 10 to 20 minutes between nine and six. I'm not sure what we're getting ourselves into. There's a lot of coaches here. I know there's a this, this is obviously a thing. Uh, can we have two tickets? Yeah. Thank you. Ticket and receipt. Thank you. Have a nice day. And where do we do we have to buy a visa or something? And the boat. That's the boat. The boat. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> 
Where are you from? England. England. Ah, thank you. So, uh, yeah, you don't actually need your passport. Oh, it's a zip line that goes all the way across. You can zip line to the island. Why did we not know that? just spotted a map which will give us a little bit more information so you can see we're by the uh, the red dot and I just think it's lots of gardens and there's some cafes and restaurants Nami Island also known as Namison is located in the Han River this crescent shaped island was formed back in 1943 following the construction of a nearby dam the island gets its name from General Nam Yi whose tomb is located on the island. Famous from a young age for his bravery, Nam Yi tragically died at the age of 28 after being falsely accused of treason. This privately owned island has a lovely relaxed feeling and is filled with tree-lined walkways, gardens, sculptures, water features and traditional style buildings. It even has some free-roaming animals such as rabbits, squirrels, deers and peafowl. But here's the question, why is it a micronation? After all, every micronation has a reason for its independence. Apart from a hotel, it doesn't seem that anybody else lives on the island. In 2006, Namisom declared its cultural independence from South Korea as a Naminara Republic to attract more visitors. The island has its own passports that act as an annual pass and currency that can be exchanged. They've got these lovely walkways through the trees and really nice gardens. It's got, it's got a nice atmosphere. Uh, touristy. It does have a very relaxed feel. Oh, look, there's a squirrel. Where? The lady's filming a squirrel there. Oh, yeah. The squirrel's got a really long black tail. I've never actually seen a squirrel with a tail quite as impressive as that. On a lovely hot day, <laughs> nothing better than standing under these mists. A fine spray of water to cool you down. <sighs> so behind this stage area here, I've just spotted that these bricks are all made out of crushed up tin cans. That's mad. I actually made a whole wall out of it. So we spotted this interesting steamed bun here. Look, red bean paste filling. Nice. See them all steaming inside. Wow. Mm, I love that. Soft, slightly, slightly moist bun. Just the texture is amazing with like red bean paste. You just can't go wrong. <laughs> That's very diplomatic, love. That's because there's lots of people. <laughs> Listen to me. We've got a recreation water centre here where they're 
there's all these kids getting dragged around behind these <gasps> speedboats. Oh, it just flipped. Oh my God, look at that. That was the one, the flying fish. <laughs> See, this end of the island now has gone really peaceful away from the the uh, the craziness i'm not sure for how long <laughs> oh that's nice look that's called the tulip house <laughs> is it just me or does that remind you of a clip from war of the worlds This place is literally like a little Hansel and Gretel's house. Look at this. It's amazing. I love the stones. I can live in this. It's massive. This is perfect size for a little house, a little tiny home, isn't it? Kitchen. Kitchen. Breakfast bar here. Bar. Stud, uh, like a working desk lounge. And then the bed that comes down. Yeah. Or a little ladder to go up. So we could build this in our house one day in the back garden and rent the house out. <laughs> Thought we'd finish our trip to the island and the video with a nice Korean lunch. Have you ever seen fried rice with cheese on top? No. I'm sold. Wow. I'm sold. Okay. You can fill. Okay, thank you. That's great. Okay. Oh, so they cook it for you. So it comes, look, you got raw chicken and all the vegetables, and then all these side dishes, and they cook it for you. So you don't need to do anything. This looks absolutely amazing. We've sat here patiently waiting for it to be cooked with all those smells going on. The, uh, the rice was cooked with this wonderful red sauce, which is made from like peppers, onions, garlic, uh, a bit of wasabi. Smells amazing. Marianne decided to have cheesy fried rice. Cheesy fried rice. I have to say, the amount of love and care. Normally Chris cooks and he's in the kitchen, so I don't see too much. I'm busy doing my laptop. But the amount of care and love that went into this. We had three people nursing, nurturing, and <laughs> lovingly cooking this food. The smells coming here are incredible. I cannot wait. There you go, your rice isn't quite ready yet, but no. you can share mine. Yeah, but he said that this is ready. And this is cooked in a soy sauce. Oh, that's lovely. Mm. Oh. I love Korean barbecues. And you have 
lettuce leaves to wrap the chicken in with some some garlic, garlic. some chili sauce from me because I like it spicy, some little chilies, some, some radish, radish, bean sprouts, some grated I think cabbage with the sauce on it. And then you also get a bowl of uh, you also get a bowl of soup, which is like a consomme. Oh, it's a match made in heaven. Delicious meal. It's also probably one of the only restaurants where you can sit and watch people bungee jump while you eat. <laughs> We've still got so much of Korea to explore. So don't forget to click subscribe as we try and figure out a way to drive all the way back to the UK.